Uh, and we are back. <laughs> okay, nice to be back with <laughs> nice you, Nice to be back. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the commercial. Thank <laughs> 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 <Very bright. laughs> So, Dr. Hart, tell us about your research these days. Well, what, what, what that, I was talking to you for a moment ago about the idea of imagination and persistence. Right. And what I was able to do is take a leap, in, you know, into the concept. What I was really measuring was not imagination and, and suggestion. I called it imaginal suggestibility. Right. What it was, was I was measuring how people use their imagination to perform tasks. Right. And I took a quantum leap in this, right. and I went right to the point of saying, this is persistence. And one of the things that a hypnotist has to know, a therapist has to know this, a doctor has, how long will somebody persist at their tasks? Right. So what I did was, I then decided I have to take this away from only working with hypnotists right, and people, right. so I went into corporate America. Right. And I worked with Motorola, for example, with their right. sales. I devised, I devised a training program where I trained people in an urban area and measured, and we had a, uh, we had a control group right. where I didn't have them trained. Right. And then I worked with somebody in a suburban area versus right. uh, a suburban area where there was another control right. group. Right. And I measured this over time. Okay. I found out the people I was training with these, with using imagery, right. the, the statistics were phenomenal. We had statistical significance right. in all this, which was fascinating. Right. I went to Mutual Benefit Life and I worked with 48 people in a uh, smoking, stop, right. smoking cessation program. Right. And I didn't understand it at the time, I do today, but the people who remain non-smokers right. after a year, I, I worked with 48 people, 14 remain non-smokers after right. a year, which is roughly about 29 percent. Right. These people scored high in my test I designed. Okay. The test we call imagination persistence okay. test. How 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 yeah. how how how, uh, how was the test conducted? Like what's in the test? Uh, what's the component of the right. test? Yes. Okay, there are three different parts to the test. You listen to a 20-minute CD. Right. Okay. And it's a 25-question paper and pencil test. Okay. In each module, we measured past, present, and future. There's okay. all image uh, in in each section. Right. And then we have a control section. Right. And it's a scoring right. thing. It's an interval type of test right. that we scored. And I've tested thousands of people with this. Right. The test does not have. It's very interesting about it, things right. I learned. It does not have a. It's measuring how well how somebody's using their imagination. Right. Many people I have found use right. their imaginations vividly okay. to fail. Oh, really? Think of the problem we have in this country today right. of weight loss. Right. And this is where I'm, I'm leading to and talking to you. Right. Because my goal today in giving back is, and I've been doing studies on this now, currently, right. using a program that I developed, which I'll mention in a moment, the weight, the problem is that many people can vividly develop in their minds right. and they get a vivid picture of what they're right. going to eat. Okay. okay. Right. Now if they're not, that means they have a good imagination. Right. However, in order for them to use their imagination to develop something, we have to reframe okay. the way they're using their imagination. Right. So they need training in this. Mm -hmm. So, however, the people, the most successful people I have found right. are those that have vivid imagery right. and they agree on what they want to do, whether it be exercise or, or losing weight or whatever it might right. be, sports or relationships, right. and they use, they, they have the skills of self-talks, all the things right. we teach, yeah. self-hypnosis, right. all the things we teach, and utilize that imagery in a, in a positive way, right. they become their own, what I call, positive uh, internal, they develop their own, they become their own internal coach. Yes, yes. And they were able to, with those skills, help themselves achieve whatever they're going to achieve. Right. That's what they're looking to do. Okay. So, the test gives me some, oh, I have an interesting case I want to tell you. Okay. Interesting story, because we have, you're familiar with the, what the term outlier means, don't you? Tell us. An outlier is a person for some other reasons, for right. example. Right. Is successful at what they do, okay. but they might. I found out they might have score poor imaginations. Okay, they have very poor imaginations. Right. 
but somehow they're successful. They could be a salesperson. I, in the case I was going to tell you, I had a screenwriter once. Well, I get, came in, he was depressed, right. Right. referred to me by a psychologist, and for hypnosis. Right. He was, he was a graduate of Williams College. Okay. I remember Great that. School. Yes. Good school. Good school. And he was a screenwriter, but he hadn't been able to produce a screenplay for at least two years. He had, prior to right. that, he was able to do it. Right, right. So I tested him, he scored very low on my test. Right. Which tells me he had poor ability to use imagery. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember, I'm talking about an outlier now, right? right? right. So, <clears throat> under, all of a sudden, so I hypnotized him. Under hypnosis, his characters came to life right. in the plays. Right. So we, together, he produced two screenplays. Under, I worked with him for about a year and a half. Right. Under hypnosis, he was able to do this. Right. Out of hypnosis, he couldn't do it. Not that he had a, a writer's block or anything, but he had the the most amazing ability under hypnosis to create. Right. And he actually finished two screenplays in about a year and a half. Oh wow! And, and then, but and the, the significance of my test is, after he stopped working with me, I tested him again. He still scored low. Oh wow! But that's what an outlier is. Okay. He has, for some ability, like many salespeople, have a great ability right. to be successful, even right. though they don't do what a normal person right. does. Right. And they have their own way of right. doing things. Right. Yeah. So that was fun. I forgot where we were going in the discussion, but um, uh, you asked. The test? You're talking about the test? The test had, 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 well, had so the that, components of the test. The components were that, right. and I have a score. Right. So I went to City University of New York. Uh, years ago, and I taught. A, they have a program. They had a program called Seek, right. and and Seek. It, it was for people from foreign countries. They have. Right. A, they, there was a cultural difference right. at that point of people uh, entering the field. Right. I believe. I believe, and I still believe to this day. My test has predictive validity. Right. I mean, I can predict who's going to be hanging there long enough. Right. So universities and colleges have a major problem. People start, it's very expensive for people, for, you know, they start the studies, right. and then they stop, they drop out. Yes. Very high dropout right. rate. So I went to the city university, I said, listen, I can do things, maybe this test will help. I knew the, 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 the head of the psychology department. Right. I tested 800 students, incoming students, with my test. Right. I, because of cultural difference, I had to throw out about 400 of the protocol, but we had right. a, a good sampling. They promised me, which they didn't fulfill their promise. Okay. to give me the SAT scores okay. so that I could uh, correlate right. SAT scores to, and my test right. to see who would have the best potential to, okay. to finish school. They reneged on that. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't have anything to work okay. with as to who. But I, that's a major problem we face right. today in this right. country. How do you think the rating... So I'm just go, going on to your logic right now. So how do you think the rating of imagination relates to let's say IQ in a loose term. Well, okay, IQ is nothing more than right. the response to items on an IQ right. test. That's like, you know, standardized so, tests like SAT or, or GRE or IQ. And well, if somebody takes you my test... Is related to imagination? I can't say that. Okay. I can't say imagination... Uh, it. it there's possibilities. Right, I, I right. would say imagination and suggestion right. it relates to. Okay. In other words, how they follow suggestions and right. what images they develop right. could be a factor. Okay. Yes. Right. For example, if you have a teacher in elementary school right. who speaks in pictorial language, right. my, my research shows that only about 15 to 20 percent of the population right. Could, could could correlate that right. could could uh, comprehend that right without pro all kinds of processing right. going on right so therefore if you have a student in that class this is my problem with the education department right it's going to skew that person is not going to be able to do well in that class right and, and conversely if you have a, a, a right. teacher who speaks in kinesthetic language right. and they're highly image related right. people in that right. class there's going to be a problem right <laughs> they don't do tests on that, right, but we'd have to teach 
go through a whole process, if you want a new career, Bernie, and teach <laughs> teachers <laughs> to speak in a combination. Right. They have to learn how to talk to right. students, and not if, not if they're highly imaginative, right. they speak in imaginative terms. And right. you, know, you have a student who doesn't have a good imagination, right. Right. they're not going to get through to that student. Right. I don't know why the system has not changed. Anyway, well, that's, we all want to know that that's my opinion, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, I know. That's, that's just an opinion. <laughs> right. Now, I want to tell you where, though, this, where I've gone with this. Right, okay. Because I think it's really important in my work now, at my stage in life, right. uh, I want to contribute to helping the weight problem in the United States. Mm -hmm. And probably throughout the world as well. Right, yes. We have a terrible problem. I'm a diabetic, type 2. Okay. And I have been. And, and I've worked with enough weight clients to know the problems. And, and, and saying, I've read the studies that exist. You know, people think, and it's not some, something negative about hypnosis, it's negative about uh, all the doctors out there and everybody else, the psychologists, everyone makes claims about weight. But they're not, right. if you keep looking at the stats, the last statistic I saw the other day, 64% right. of women are obese. Oh, no, excuse me, correct that. 64% of women are overweight, a third of those right. are obese. Think of that. Mm -hmm. Now, I have not looked at the latest statistics, but they're very high with children developing all kinds of problems due to weight problems. Right. So we have a major crisis going on here in this right. country. Right. Now, hypnotists typically work with weight loss. Right. Now, they need to understand and read some studies, for example, that would help them understand that things like you cannot do aversive therapy right. working with weight loss. It doesn't work. Right. But with smoking, you can. That's true. That's true. Yes. So, given that, there's an education that's involved with how we as hypnotists, consulting hypnotists work. Right. And as you know, I'm a psychologist, so I have a clinical background there work with clients, I have to know these studies. Right. So we have to share this information. So what I've done now is I've developed a program, which I think I trained you with a little bit, if you remember, bit, yeah. called the Goal Image Focusing Technique. Right. It's a six-step program, mm -hmm. and I keep learning with it because my last two years I've been researching internal motivation versus right. external motivation right. and what the differences are. Okay. Major differences. Okay. And I would suggest to your audience as okay. well. Tell us what, what you mean in the difference of the internal. Oh, okay. Internal motivation would be something that you do because you want to do it, like a hobby. Right. You do it because it's something you really want to right. do. Right. External motivation would be something that you do, like, for money. Okay. Or typically what happens, a woman comes to me as a, as a patient right. and says, my daughter is getting married in 30 days. Right. I have to lose... 10 pounds. Right. Now she's doing this only because her daughter's getting married. She wants right. to fit into a nice dress for her family right. at the wedding. Right. The minute the wedding's over, back. Right. Right. <laughs> Done. Right. That's external. Right. Okay. I found out and I've developed a concept called internal motivation factor. The IMF. Right. Sounds like the International Monetary <laughs> Fund, but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's Hart's internal right. motivation. Uh, uh, but the internal motivation factor is something that I create for people or help people do. Mm -hmm. For example, let me right. ask you a question. Yes. Okay. I, we haven't talked personally in a while, you and I, about something uh, that's important to you uh, that you would like to achieve. Give me an idea something that you'd like to do. Eh, it could um, be losing weight. It could be whatever. What, the, what is it that you've had a problem with for some time now? I always have writer's block. Writer's block. Right, yes. Okay, and that's, you've labeled it now. You've given yourself... Right. That, I guess it's the term that I borrowed from, from what I've read, yeah. Writer's block. No, writer's right. block. So, sitting down and putting paper right. to pencil... Or like on, typing, on pencil. Yeah. Huh? Typing these things. Typing things. Yeah. 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 Something shuts off or something, right. whatever. Right. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so let's do a little exercise. Okay. Just see what the outcome is. I, I, I'm relating it to what you need to understand what your motivation yes. is. Yes. In other words, maybe you don't really want to be a writer. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, let's find out. Yeah, all right. Okay? So, just close your eyes for a moment. Okay. <clears throat> and put yourself in a scene where you're experiencing this writer's block. You could be at home with your computer, any place else. 
Okay. You have something? Yes. You, uh, just sit there for about, until you hear my voice again, about okay. 20 seconds, and then I'll talk to you again. And just be in that scene. Mm-hmm. Now take yourself out of that scene now and put yourself in another scene, a very safe place where you're very happy, very comfortable. Could be the beach, could be the country, could be your bedroom, wherever you choose. Just take yourself away from that other scene and just be there and be happy. You could be whoever you want, you could be there with you, and just be there for 20 seconds. Now I want you to go back to the first scene, and I want you to be in that situation, if you're alone or with someone else, doesn't really matter, and let your unconscious mind find one thing, only one thing we're looking for now, that you could do, something you could do after this interview that will get you started to writing again. One thing that you will do that will keep you happy, something that's internal within you of, that you could do, and something that's important to you right. that will get you to change your behavior immediately and do it right away after this interview. And when you have that, you can just open your eyes. Okay. What happened? <laughs> Did so, something occur to you that you could do? Just clean up the space that I'm working on. The area? Yeah, the area, yeah. 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 Because if you came to me and said tomorrow right. you want to go jogging, right. the first thing I'm going to ask you is your own shoes to <laughs> jog right, with. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Huh? So you have to count that. I'm looking for a behavior. Right. I'm looking to take it out of the cognitive process. Right. right. People get stuck in their heads. Right, that's true. That's very true. Yeah. You know, you know, in psychology, everything evolves around thoughts, feelings, and actions. Right. 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 So what I'm looking to achieve here is I'm getting you out of your head into a behavior. Right. And you have to know why you're doing this. Right. Because if you, how are you going to work if you don't have a space around you to work? Right. Right. That's true. Housewives right. go through this all the time. Right. They say to themselves, "Well, I have to clean the whole house." Right. <laughs> Right, that's true. And they, they can't think of cleaning one room, right. so they don't do anything. Right. <coughs> so, I'm <coughs> just trying to give you a sense of that, and that I have figured out this is a major problem that people have. Yes, yes. So I've built it into a six-step plan that allows them to hold themselves accountable. Okay. The, the goal image focusing technique basically is the buy-in step. I have to get people to buy in that if you can't imagine yourself, you have a fear of speaking in front of an audience, right, for example. Right. If you can't speak in front of an audience, if you can't imagine what that's like, right. then you'll never be able to do it. Right. So I have to teach them to do that. Right. Then, why do you want to do it? That's the second step. Right. Right? Right. I mean, what's your internal motive? What's your real reason, like for weight loss, which is where I'm relating right, to? Right. Yes. What's your real reason for wanting to Some people will say vanity, some people will say health. Some right. people say they want to have a better sexual relationship. Right. So whatever, right. their reason, everybody's got a different reason for wanting it. Instead of practicing avoidance behavior, right. right, we've got to get a different, a positive behavior right. going. So then we have the building blocks for creating the real you. Right. Here is Bernie the writer. <laughs> right. Right? Sure Let's right. get this picture. Bernie the writer. Right. What does Bernie, Bernie look like? How does Bernie dress? How does Bernie walk? How does Bernie look? Right. How does he keep his hair? How does he keep his posture? Does Bernie be, want to be on stage as a famous author? Well, I don't know. I'm just making this right. up. That's true. Right? Yeah, now, once we have this yeah. you, I could take you and teach you to write a script right. that you can do every day to reinforce and encourage yourself right. to do it. Right. Huh? Then I put you back in your old old situation right. where you have your old habits. Right. Oh, my space is all full again and all <laughs> yes. this stuff, yeah. right? Yes. And then we focus on uh, your, you've accomplished this now. Right. Your pride is better. You have feel good about yourself. Yes. yes. And we develop an action plan to sustain it. Right. That's the program. Right. 
Now, what I'm doing with New York University now, my doctor yes. is my, di my endocrinologist, okay. sent, sent me six patients to start with. Right. And the patients were, unfortunately, average weight 275 pounds. Okay. And they all have diabetes, type okay. 1 or 2. Dangerous situation. Yes. And what I've done with them is I worked with them. I have the results after four months. Okay. Three of the six, I had six. Three of the six have done well. When I say done well, they've lost on average 1% of their body weight a week, which is okay. what I'm teaching them. Okay. One woman lost in four months. She's lost about 25 pounds. Okay. So that's good. The other three kind of were dropouts. Okay. Now, I just read some 10-year studies uh, done, published by the New, New England Journal of Medicine. Right. It was a recent publication, right? Yes. Yes. And shows the efficacy of metformin, which is a diabetic right. pill, it's right. glucophage, right. exo, yes, yes. and lifestyle change. Right. right. So what my doctor is attempting to do now, and I hope he's successful, is to now take what we've got here, we don't have enough evidence here, but and get New York University to right. fund or, or develop a grant right. for a much larger study. Yes. Because the proof is that when you have a long-term study, right. the, effort, the, the ability to create a lifestyle change right. okay. together with the medication right. will reduce the epidemic of, of diabetes. So where would the hypnosis come in? In my program? Yes. Oh, the goal, the no, gift in, in program. The experiment or, or well, that would be my goal image focusing technique okay, yes. is made up all of hypnosis. Okay, that's true. So that's the motivating program. That's okay. the motivational part. Right. Together with the medication, together with a diabetic right. nutritionist. Right. And now you have the essence of what's needed to help people. That's true. Wow. So I'm just contributing. Yes. And he wants my program now. Yes. To be part of that study. Great. Great. So that's what I'm looking to yes. do. So I mean, I mean, I just want to give back. It's not, it's not a, it, you know, my goal is not to make money with it necessarily. Right. That's true. Yeah. You know, but I am making CDs now because I'm taking this process, and my first three CDs that are, are going to come out is going to be a series of for weight, stress, and sleep. Okay. I've identified those three as the most major important. I also right. have, you know, goal image focusing technique. I changed. Right. The golf image. I happen to be a golfer. Right, okay, that's so, right. That's great. But just that, that's for fun. Right, yes. But this is much more serious. I believe that we in this field of hypnosis have to make an impact. That's very true. In the work that we do. Whatever you're doing, you have to make an impact. Yes. And the greater the impact, I think, the more skills we have. Right. And we can teach people. <clears throat> it's not, you know, in my mind, short-term psychotherapy is about 16 sessions with, yes. with a client. Yes. People don't want to come for long periods of time right. anymore. Yes. And the managed care has, has changed the healthcare system. Yes. So it's not the same. We as hypnotists can learn skills. Yes. Because what we do is plow through resistance right. and come to the other side. Right. All right. We're not psychoanalysts. Right. You know, but if we learn these skills and can give our clients, and with, and knowing what we're doing, and not just reading a script to somebody and using our imaginations to teach our clients. Right. We have to get our clients' imaginations that's involved. Yeah, that's very important. Yes. Huh? Yeah. That's the way it works. It has to come from them. Absolutely. Yes. So we have about five minutes left. So if somebody is out there is trying to lose weight right now, what, what kind of advice would you give them? How would you motivate them? If they came to me? Yes, like right now. Or if somebody's watching well, this right now and... Well, I would, well the first thing I would... My, my programs are simple. Right. Okay. Everything evolves around the proper assessment. Yes. So I have to assess, I mean, are they coming to me to lose weight? Okay. To get divorced? Or okay. quit their job? Right. Or okay. do something else? Right. So I have to clarify okay. why they're really okay. coming to me. Okay. What's the value of me saying you're okay. going to lose weight? Okay. And they want to get divorced. Right. <laughs> I mean, it makes no sense right, to me, right? right? right. Well, and they want. So I have to determine that, right. which is very, very much right. the case. And one reason why hypnosis by itself is not successful right. necessarily by itself, right. unless you do this kind of work. Right. So they, let's assume they, they, uh, you know, want to lose weight. Right. Okay. Right. That's the real reason. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And they're, let's say, 25 pounds over. My right. typical patient, by the way, in New York, has been a woman who would have a stable job, good job, 
and <clears throat> have a family, whatever, or be single, whatever right. it would be. And she, she, her typical excuse, she doesn't have time to exercise. So, I mean, the simplicity of weight loss is you got to stop eating, you got to exercise. Right. Now, all I'm going to do is find out their reasons for them, so I'm going to do an assessment. Right. And then we're going to work out a plan. Right. I'm going to test them to find out their imaginative abilities. Right. This CD, I have a test that right. measures this. Right. I'm going to determine how then to work with them. Right. Now, the way I'm going to work with them, if they score low on my tests, right. I don't use any imagery in my work right. with them. Right. It's, too co it's not cost effective. People score low. It takes too long to teach them how to work with their imaginations. Right. Uh, and by the way, the reason you should understand that people don't have have poor imaginations usually is due to some trauma in childhood. Okay. It could be uh, sexual abuse, right. a parent dying, a right. car accident, right. um, anything like that. Any trauma cuts off their imagination. It used to be, I even found with people, when they had their tonsils taken out, right. not in your stage, you're too young for this, but <laughs> they used to put ether masks on oh, our face. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. And people, once they put an ether mask on, right. it cut off their imaginative abilities. Right. So I right. found a few cases like that. Kind of interesting. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No one can imagine. But right. I work with them with tasks. They can right. be equally successful. Right. So we agree on what the tasks. I hypnotize them. Right. Here's what you can do next week. One, two, right. three, four, okay. five. Boom. Right. People who score medium on my test, ha I work with a combination of tasks right. and imagination. Right. I start to give them exercises, 20-second exercises right. to go home and practice. Right. To, to, to make their imaginations more vivid. Right. And people who score high on my tests, I don't tell them what to do at all. I only work with imagery. Right. Because what I found with people, if you encourage people or try to nag people to be who have high imagery, right. their performance falls off. Oh, really? Yes. Most amazing thing. Wow. Yes. They don't like to be taught. So I'll create, I, I will create... Uh, uh, did you ever take my test? I don't know. I think I did, yeah. Did you? Yes. You don't remember what your score was. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I might be too embarrassed to know. It might be zero, right? <laughs> <laughs> you off the scale. <laughs> right? I said the score is from zero to 84. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are under Mine zero. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in reality, I have found this is a way to work with right, clients. Right, right. So I'm working what their skill level is. Right. Why should I use imagination with somebody who can't imagine? Right. That's what I teach by my students now right. in my train to trainer program. Right. And anybody I train, I teach them this. Right. I teach them, you can't just go, what you do works for everybody. It doesn't. It doesn't, yeah. I told you. Do you know it. that? Yeah. yeah. Right? So, so yeah. I've had a good ride. It's been good fun. It's been good fun. And yeah, I'm, now I'm going to my next life. We you have know? about two minutes left. Quickly, where do you see yourself in five years? Where well, would Dr. Richard Hart be? Well, I hope I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be here. You'll be here. You'll be sitting back right here. <laughs> we'll do another yeah. Five years? Well, you know my passion is golf. So <laughs> okay. maybe I get my score down a little lower. <laughs> uh, you know, I live in Florida now and in New okay. York, both places. And I, I like to teach. I think I, my role five years will be I'll still be teaching. Okay. I hopefully will have... Uh, Made, there's two areas I think I've somewhat become an expert in. Okay. The one is stress management. I understand stress, yes. and stress is a component of everything that I've ever done with people because yes, it's it's unless I help people understand. You've heard me say use words like the zygonic effect. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. When that means if there's a stress build up and you don't have an outlet for it, you just right. explode. That's right. what people are doing today, unfortunately. Right. But I, I think I have that component. I've built it into my uh, weight loss program. Right. And I think I'll just go on. I, I like my lifestyle right now is good. I right. just, hopefully I have studies done that right. give me better results that people pick up on and right. can replicate. Right. I want my students to replicate my work. Right. Great. If I teach, and you know you're a good example of this, I want people to go out and teach and be good teachers. Yeah. I want them to get this information out. something... I have a wealth of information of being a clinician for 30 right. years. Yes. And why don't people pick up on this? Yes. And it's, you know, my work, work is simple. Everything evolves around assessment, goal setting, right. reinforcement, and encouragement. Right. Assess a situation, help somebody set up what they really want to do, right. and help them learn skills to reinforce and encourage themselves. Right. That's the way I work. Right. Very simple. Very simple, yeah. You know, and I'm, 
relatively happy. I mean, you know, right. yes. I hope we do another interview. Yeah, let's do it some other time. <laughs> Five years from now, <laughs> maybe <laughs> ten years from now. <laughs> there will be many more in between. There will be many more in between. Yes. Thank you for coming by. Okay. Thank you for sharing Thank your you. stories. I yes, love it. Let's do this I love again. Let's I love it. it. Okay, very <laughs> All right. good. This is Hypnotist Bernice Exposition. Join us next week, Tuesday night, CCTV, Channel 9.